Hi, in this video I'm going to quickly overview MediaMill, which is one of the tools that we have available at the University of Minnesota. It is similar to YouTube, Vimeo, Dailymotion. The difference is that it allows you to upload videos to the University of Minnesota servers. Why would you do that? You would usually do that if you have a video that you want to keep a little bit more uh, private and you don't want to share it to in, in in terms of YouTube to anybody that has access to it. While YouTube has privacy settings, it is not housed with the University of Minnesota servers. It is housed in different servers throughout the world. So that's one of the advantages that MediaMail has over servers, services such as YouTube for University of Minnesota users. To sign in, you have to go to mediamail.cla.umn.edu and get your X500 to access the, the, the system. If you want to upload a video, you just have to use the, the file system that it has. You click on Upload Video, so use the file system, and then upload the video. If it's a video that's larger than 200 megabytes, and that can be a larger file of gigabytes, a whole DVD, it can be any type of file. Um, any type of video file, regardless of how large it is. You just then download uh, a plugin, I already downloaded it, and it, it's just a little program that you type that username and password, uh, add the files and then click upload. Once the files are uploaded you'll be able to go to my videos and see them there. These are some of the videos that I have uploaded for faculty members. And for projects. Um, let's see one of them. So when you upload the video this is how it looks. In this case this video has no derivatives that have been made shows you the transcript if you want to, credits, copyright, the file, when it was uploaded, the resolution, and the codec that it was uploaded with. However, most of the time you'll make derivatives from them, so in this case Dr. Rooney has made various derivatives with this video. Unlike a system like YouTube that automatically adapts to the screen, uh, the, the, the player that you're using, it might adapt to the screen of uh, an iPad for example, it adapt to the type of connection that you have, so it'll send you a better or slower stream. Media Mill doesn't do that automatically, you have to manually create each derivative. So you have to create a derivative that allows for um, Flash or for HTML or different codecs. I'll show you how to make a derivative. Let's pick a video with less derivatives so that that one doesn't hit another one. But uh, this one only has three. So it has a Flash one, Flash 50% and a QuickTime 100%. So then what we do is we click on the plus sign, add derivative, the other icons are download original, share, delete, and then change the, the metadata. So we we'll click on add derivative and then you'll have various options. Let's say we only wanted a, an audio option. Usually here we create primarily an HTML, HTML5 option, but in this case I'm just going to create an audio option. You submit a request and that option is then queued for processing. Once the options are finished, you'll have the ability to set them to private if you want to um, by changing the... if you change the video settings or the metadata, you'll be able to decide whether you want that video to be private, public, or X500 only, and then submit edits. So then the video will give you a public playable URL download URL, HTML embed code, and you can then also submit it to YouTube. Usually what you'll share with your class, while well, you can share either the embedding or the playable, and both are playable files, um, the embedding you should share within a page or within a label in Moodle, public playable URL which should be a link, you just add a link to your course site, and they'll be able to access the video. So again, summarizing a little bit of what MediaMill does, it allows you to upload videos similar to YouTube. You have unlimited storage. However, you have to create the derivatives manually. The benefit of using MediaMill is that it is housed with the University of Minnesota servers. If you go to Preferences, you'll be able to set additional settings, and you'll also have an ability to record videos straight from the browser. And you'll also be able to classify 
your projects if you want to as well. Classify videos into projects. So I have here award videos, iPad training videos, your time videos, etc. So you'll be able to also collapse them into groups if you find the broader menu a little bit too long. So the audio file has been finished now. The one I queued a few, not that long ago, a few seconds ago. And it's already, if you wanted to play, you could play. Um, so that'd be it. If you have any questions, please let us know.